This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Jamaican woman in New York charged for extorting CEO through catfishing scheme. A Jamaican woman living in New York is facing federal charges for a catfishing scheme in which she used multiple online identities to target richer prominent men for extortion. Sequoia Blackwood, 34, is charged with cyberstalking, extortion, and interstate communications with the intent to extort. The most serious of the charges, extortion, carries a maximum penalty of 20 years in prison. If convicted of all three, she could face 27 years behind the bars. According to an indictment unsealed in New York on Wednesday, Ms. Blackwood, who also goes by various aliases, began the alleged scheme in March of this year. By April, the FBI was investigating her. She allegedly targeted an unnamed CEO of a publicly traded company. While details of their alleged interactions were not provided, authorities claim Ms. Blackwood used the online communications to elicit compromising materials from the victim, then attempted to blackmail him over the course of several months. Court documents allege Blackwood attempted to extort numerous other potential victims, all wealthy and high-profile men. According to court documents, when Blackwood was arrested on Wednesday, authorities executed a search warrant at her home in the Bronx that she shared with her mother, her brother, and her daughter. They allegedly found the six different ID cards. Beyond the catfishing scheme, authorities allege Blackwood used the aliases in her professional life and presented different addresses and educational backgrounds on her resumes. Authorities also say Blackwood has no history of legal employment and lacks legal immigration status, having arrived in the U.S. from Jamaica in 2002 on a tourist visa. Police target bikers in New Kingston A number of motorcycles were seized by police on Knoxford Boulevard in New Kingston, St. Andrew on Friday. The bikes were seized for a number of traffic offenses, including not having proper documentation. The operation was part of efforts to tackle a rise in robberies in the business district. Motorcycles are often used by persons to carry out robberies and other criminal activities. Homemade firearms seized in Hanover A homemade handgun, along with several rounds of ammunition, was seized by the Hanover police on the Sandy Bay Main Road on Thursday. One man was taken into custody in connection with the seizure. Reports were that about 12.30 p.m., a man visited the station to make reports about a shooting incident. Whilst at the station, the suspect was seen riding along the roadway. He was pointed out to the police. He was subsequently accosted and searched, and the homemade firearm and the 10 rounds of ammunition were taken from him. Labor Ministry denies a claim farm workers unaware of destination beforehand. The Minister of Labor is denying claims that participants in the farm work program are not aware of their destination ahead of being placed on the flight to designated locations overseas. A Jamaican farm worker in Canada complained that he was unaware of the destination prior to arriving at the location. Colin Roberts Risden, permanent secretary in the Ministry of Labor, responded to the issue on Friday. She said information on the destination and the employer is provided to farm workers during their processing at the Labor Ministry. They would know what destination they're going, especially the repeat workers. They know which employer they're going to and everything. So at the pre-flight processing, they, they know which employer they're going to. They would know where they're going, at, even if they don't realize it at the application visa time, they definitely know at the time that we're doing the pre-flight processing because workers are processed in batches. So we might be sending 10 workers to Farmer A. We process those 10 workers together. So you know that these 10 workers are going to Employer X that is in Ontario. In the meantime, it has been revealed that only 13 liaison officers have been assigned to conduct routine inspections at the 655 farms in Canada. Approximately 10,000 Jamaican workers are employed to farms in that country. Routine checks are done twice yearly by the liaison officers. Speaking with the news, Kenneth Phillips, Jamaica's chief liaison officer in Canada, said the ministry has given approval 
for other liaison officers to be employed. We have asked for, for a number of liaison officers which the permanent secretary and the minister gave approval and we are, we are about to engage. We have selected four additional liaison officers the service. Merciless to be laid to rest with two day celebrations. The life of legendary dancehall DJ Leonard Merciless Bartley will be celebrated over two days themed the finale. There will be a viewing at the St. Gabriel's Anglican Church Hall in Mepen on September 15 from 9 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. A prior meeting, a tribute and a reflection are then scheduled for Turner's District at 6 p.m. and the wake is scheduled to start at 9 p.m. The thanksgiving service will take place on Saturday, September 17 at St. Gabriel's starting at 10 a.m. with the interment at the family plot in Turner's District. Merciless was found unresponsive inside a guest house of Beechwood Avenue in St. Andrew on July 19. The autopsy result was deemed inconclusive. New companies registered is set to surpass 2,021 numbers. The number of new companies registered in Jamaica is said to surpass the figure recorded in 2021. Investment Minister Aubin Hill pointed to the announcement by the company's office of Jamaica last month that Jamaica is on track to surpass 17,039 business names and 4,878 new companies recorded last year. The increase, he said, is being driven by new entrepreneurs emerging across industries such as e-commerce and ICT manufacturing and distribution. As the number of local companies grow, Mr. Hill said the need to raise capital will increase. But he expressed the confidence that there is money in the country to meet those needs, adding that Jamaica is a place to list. Mr. Hill was speaking Thursday at the listing of one-on-one -on -one educational services on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. Last month, the company's office of Jamaica, which is an agency of my ministry, announced that the, con the country is on track to surpass some 17,039 business names and 4,878 new companies recorded last year as new entrepreneurs emerge across such, such industries as e-commerce and ICT manufacturing and distribution. They will invariably require capital. There is money in the country. This is the place to list. Six schools to get CCTV cameras. Plans have been outlined to install closed-circuit television cameras in six schools during the new academic year, which begins on Monday. The Ministry of Education says $15 million will be spent on installing the equipment. The CCTV cameras are slated for Papine High School in St. Andrew, Denham Town High School in Kingston, Eltham High School in St. Catherine, Grangeil High School in Westmoreland, Hopewell High School in Hanover, and Arakabesa High School in St. Mary. Education Minister Favel Williams said other initiatives, such as random searches to prevent the entry of prohibited items in schools, will continue. And just to update, we continue to have our deans of discipline. We have 129 deans of disciplines. We have guidance counselors. We've increased the number of guidance counselors by 98 to 1,016. We continue to implore our principals, our teachers, and administrators to heighten their awareness and increase their vigilance. Of course, you know that there are different levels um, or teachers in the classroom. Uh, they would be the first to notice uh, a change in behavior. They can activate the guidance counselors at the schools. And if the guidance counselors feel that there is need for more beyond what they can do, then we have this system in place to help our guidance counselors. Maureen Dwyer, Acting Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Education, called for greater parental vigilance in combating behavioral and the substance abuse issues among children. Although schools are controlled environment, we have no control sometimes over the surrounding, the shop across the road or the um, vendor two doors down and so on and so on. So we are concerned about that. And as we move to create policies to make our schools safer places, I have no doubt some of those factors will come into play.
I'm also concerned about um, the role of adults. Our adults, our parents, should stop paying lip service to the raising of our children in this nation and come on board with us to help us to make sure that our children at least get a chance to be all that they can be. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.